that's all there is to the theater. The curtain and the first wing, and after that, just space. No decor, just the lake and the horizon. We'll raise the curtain sharply at half past nine. The moon should be up by then. Splendid. Nina's late, the whole effect will be ruined. She ought to be here by now. Her father and stepmother keep her under lock and key. She might as well be in prison. It's so difficult for her to get out of the house. Oh, your hair and beard are very untidy. Oughtn't you to go to a barber? It's the tragedy of my life. When I was young, I always looked as if I'd been drinking heavily. You know what I mean. I never had any success with women. No, indeed. Why is my sister in such a bad mood? Why? And she's bored. And she's jealous. She's against me, against the performance, against my play, because she isn't acting in it, and Nina is. She hasn't even read it yet, and she hates it already. <laughs> she's upset because here, on this tiny stage, it'll be Nina who'll be having the success, and not her. She's a psychological phenomenon, my mother. She has talent, there's no doubt about that. She's intelligent. She's quite likely to break her heart over a novel. She nurses the sick like an angel. But you just try saying one word of praise about the great Jewser when she's around. Oh! You mustn't praise anyone but her. She's the one you've got to write about. You've got to be amazed at her remarkable performance in La Dame aux Camellias and the fallacy of life. You see, here we are in the country and there's none of this fuss and flurry, so she's bored and fractious. We're her enemies, every one of us. She ends up by disliking everything around her. And she's superstitious. She's scared to death of three candles and number 13, and she's miserly. She has 75,000 rubles in the bank. I know that for a fact, but you ask her for a loan, she'll cry her heart out. You have it fixed in your head that your mother doesn't like your play, and that makes you anxious, and so on and so forth. You mustn't worry like that. Your mother adores you. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. There you are, you see. My mother doesn't love me. Well, of course she doesn't. She wants to live, to love, to wear bright clothes. I'm already 25, and I'm a constant reminder to her that she's no longer young. When I'm not there, she's 32, but when I am, she has to admit to 48, and she detests me for that. She knows very well that the theatre as it is means nothing to me. She adores it. She sees herself serving humanity. She thinks of the theatre as some kind of sacred art. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the theatre as it is today is dead, a mere convention. When the curtain goes up on a room, with three walls lit by artificial light. And these great artists, these high priests of art, start imitating people eating, drinking, loving, moving about, wearing their humdrum clothes. When out of a few vulgar images and sentences, they try to extract a moral, just a very little one. And that's got to be adaptable and convenient and safe for domestic use. Well, I'm offered the same old thing over and over and over again in a thousand variations. I just take to my heels and run like Maupassant when he ran from the Eiffel Tower because of its vulgarity. You can't do without it. Without the theatre, I mean. We need change. We need new forms. And if we can't find them, it would be better to have nothing at all. I love my mother. I love her deeply, but she leads an absurd life. She's always drifting around with that novelist. There's always something about her in the gossip columns, and it all wears me out. Sometimes I'm overcome by the sheer egotism of a simple soul. I bitterly regret that my mother's a famous actress, and it seems to me that I would be far happier if she were just an ordinary woman. Uncle, can you think of any situation more desperate and detestable? There she is, surrounded by a great crowd of celebrities, artists, writers. And out of the whole lot, I am the only non-entity. What am I? Who am I? 
I walked out in my third year at the university because of circumstances, as they say, over which the editor accepts no responsibility, with no talents, without a penny to my name. According to my passport, I am a tradesman of the city of Kiev, like my father was, though he was a famous actor as well. So, when all these famous artists and writers did finally condescend to pay some attention to me, it was as if they were measuring my mediocrity. I could see what they were thinking. The humiliation was unbearable. By the way, do tell me, what do you think of that novelist? I can't make him out somehow. He hardly opens his mouth. He's intelligent, naive, perhaps a little inclined to melancholy. He's decent enough. He's not 45 and is already famous and bored stiff with the whole thing. His writing, I'd say, is pleasant and not without talent. But after Tolstoy and Zola, I wouldn't want to start reading Trigorin. I must admit, dear boy, I'm rather drawn to literary men myself. There was a time in my youth when there were two things I wanted passionately. To get married and to be a man of letters. But I did neither, though indeed. Would be nice to have uh, been a mediocre writer, even, you know. I can hear someone coming. I can't live without her. Even the sound of her footsteps is music to me. I'm so happy, so wonderfully happy. I'm not late! No, no, I'm not late! No, 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 you're not late. Oh, I, I've been so nervous all day. I was terrified Father wouldn't let me come. But he just went out with my stepmother, and I rode like the wind. <laughs> but I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> A little red about the eyes, aren't we? It won't do, it won't do. It's nothing. <laughs> See how bad a breath I am? Oh. Oh, we have to go in half an hour, Mr. Harry. For God's sake, don't make me stick longer. I can't. I simply can't. Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, yes, we, we ought to begin now. I, I'll go and I'll go and fetch them, Sally. Now, Frank, Frank, he's in the He pardon in Russland, Gaffungen! <laughs> One day, I started singing like that, and an assistant public prosecutor said to me, I say, Your Excellency, you've got a powerful voice. Then he paused and added, But an unpleasant one. <laughs> Father and his wife don't like my coming here. They say the atmosphere is too bohemian, and they're frightened I want to become an actress. But I'm drawn here to the lake. I... Like a seagull, my heart belongs to you. We're alone. I thought I heard someone. No, 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 there's nobody. What kind of tree is that? An elm. Why is it so dark? Well, it's almost night time. All things grow dark by now. Don't leave early, I implore you. What can I do? How can I help it? Shall I come back with you, Nina? I'll stand in the garden all night, looking up at your window. <laughs> no, it's impossible. The watchman would see you. Tressa wasn't used to you yet. He'd start barking. I love you. 